I was born in Waynesville, Illinois uh, in May 1941, and uh, it was in the house where my great-grandmother and my grandmother lived. And, and I, I happened to be born there because my parents at the time lived at Downs, Illinois, and uh, my mother wanted to be near her mother when, you know, she was giving birth, so that's why she came down there. I had um, two brothers, Donald and Selby, and I had two sisters, uh, Virginia and Darlene, who, uh, had, who had already died in an accident coming home from school. And um, my dad was a farmer, and we had happened to move to Downs because I think mom and dad wanted to get away from a re any reminder of where she had been killed, where Darlene had been killed. So we, dad got a farm over there by Downs and we moved over there. We probably weren't at Downs over a year and we moved away from there um, probably in March of 41, I mean of, of um, 42. And we moved down to Waynesville here, uh, right up the road to what was known as the Nebel Place. Some people named Nebel owned it. And uh, so Dad lived there, and we lived there, and Dad farmed that. And uh, then a farm became available over at Rock Creek, by Rock Creek, which was probably uh, two or three miles away. I loved growing up there. It, it was a big two-story house and, and a great big barn and lots of room to play in, and I did. And there was a large corn crib also, and there was a large chicken house and um, a well house over the deep well. And the house property, you might say, um, there was a lot of, lot of area. Um, over the the barn lot and you know and all around the outbuildings and it was a large yard and, and um, just a lot of room to play in and feel open and free in. I would ride my tricycle and bike when I got a little bit bigger down the lane and then down down the road up to the cemetery because it had there was always a lot of wildflowers that grew out along the bank and you know in the summertime and I loved them and I'd pick them and there was also poison ivy along in there and I I would catch it every year and I never did learn my lesson every year I'd go back and I'd get a terrible case of poison ivy the well house was down close not very far from the road and I, I would just think, oh, if I can just make it over there and I could get me a cold, cold, good, sweet drink. And it just tasted so wonderful. And sometimes I would strip down and I would get, there were two, two big tanks, water tanks, uh, one for the cows to water out of and one that dad put the milk cans in, you know, after he would finish milking until the milk, milkman picked them up. And, and so there were two tanks there and I would, you know, get, get in them and cool off. There were lots of little bugs and scummy worms and everything else in the water, but it, I didn't care. I was a little kid, I was hot, steaming hot, and so I just wanted to cool off. Oscar Bauckham Phelps. He came from Butler County, Kentucky. Many people from Kentucky back then came up here. His mother died with World War I flu when he was pretty, pretty small, pretty young, and his dad remarried. He was just a, a wonderful, loving, kind, gentle, hardworking man. Mom was very hardworking too, and um, she could really play the piano and she was a very good seamstress. She loved, loved to take care of her chickens. She always had a lot of chickens and she, you know, she loved to take care of her chickens. There was a lot of work for everyone because it was a farm and it was, you know, there was just a lot to, lot to do with all of the livestock and all of the chickens and so on. And, and uh, I had to bring in uh, trying to remember how many buckets of coal at night and then a 
a how many gallon bucket of cobs. As soon as I got off the bus, I had to change my clothes and put on my old work clothes and hike out there and uh, go in that dark building and, you know, bring in the coal and cobs. And I would, boy, throw it in just as fast as I could and, and to get it back up to the porch, set it on the back of the porch. And then I had all those eggs together because mom had a lot of chickens. I had all those eggs together. And whenever I got a little bit bigger, then I had, had to wash them too because she sold them, you know. There was just plenty of work to do always. Oh yeah, it was, it was cold because it was a big two-story house and it did not have central, central heating, you know. There was no furnace. There was a coal stove in the living room and there was one in the kitchen, and uh, the bedrooms were cold. You'd run out at night and warm your pillow, you know, real good, and then run in there and flop in bed as quick as you could and pull the blankets up. But it, but it, it was cozy, it was cozy, it really was. It was winter time and um, they were, went to a country school over there by Clinton. That's when we lived over there off Route 10 in Clinton, or they did. I wasn't born yet. And uh, they were coming home from school one day, and a neighbor there uh, nearby called the kids in. She had made popcorn balls that day, and they all got a popcorn ball. They were walking home, and uh, it was a curvy, hilly part of the road, and Darlene was right, um, right almost in the middle of it and there was a car coming along and I think my sister yelled at her to go back and she couldn't really hear and I think maybe she had started to go back or something and it was too late then. And she was hit, you know, by the car and, and killed. It was a carload of, of boys, young boys from Lincoln and um, they were going to Champaign to a ball game as I understand it and the driver had his dad's new car and was trying to see how fast it would go. Virginia was the oldest and um, she helped, she worked like a man. She helped with the milking and she helped outside and and um, she helped mom inside and, and uh, just, you know, she just had a lot of work to do because she was the oldest child. She um, got married at an early age, and uh, that didn't work out. She had a she had a little girl, Linda, and um, they divorced, and uh, her and her first husband divorced. And she got a job in Bloomington, and she lived up there. And Linda stayed with us, and uh, Virginia would come home on the weekends. It was summertime, and uh, of course I was home from school, and Linda was too, because as I say, she stayed with us, uh, was living with us at that time. And my dad, and, and I think the brothers were up in the field or whatever. She would work many times in the summertime uh, at the canning factory in Bloomington or something like that. And she was working at this time. I suppose we had been warned about if we saw any strange cars or anybody, anything like that to go hide or whatever. And so I saw this car coming up the lane and I didn't recognize it. And about the only vehicles that came up our road and up our lane were the school bus and the milkman and the, you know, and uh, uh, the mail, mailman. And they were, were coming on up to the house and I did not recognize the car. It looked like just a man in it. So I took Linda and hustled out the back door of that big house and out through the corn patch, the, you know, the sweet corn patch, and I think across the field, across the pasture and into the big corn field. And, uh, you know, waited a decent amount of time and then, then came, we came back to the house after that. We didn't have any storm cellar, and Dad was very much afraid of, of, of uh, storms because he had come from Kentucky, which had a lot of them, you know. So whenever one was coming, why, he would 
hustle us into the car and go over to where my cousins used to live because there was an old storm cellar there. One came up and uh, for some reason we were staying home and I had a dog that was tied to the tree out to the off the kitchen porch. I wanted to go out and untie him, but they wouldn't let me. I didn't want him to choke to death, the wind blowing him, you know, like that. And anyway, uh, it, the storm got strong enough that mom and dad were holding, holding the doors shut as best they could, like the kitchen door and maybe the front door, I don't remember which. I don't remember it, but Linda said I slipped out and untied the dog and let him loose anyway. But it, it was, you know, it blew in, I think it blew in some windows and and it blew over a grove of trees down south of the house, and and uh, it, it was a per per fairly bad storm. Oh, I love to go to Grandma Johnson's house, where she was always so good to us and all like that, and she'd always fix us. She called it a piece, you know, a bread with jelly or jam or something or other on it. Sometimes she would let me run up town and get her a loaf of bread or do something or other like that. She and my grandfather, Harry Johnson, had divorced many years before, and um, he had made life very, very hard for her, and she got to the point where she couldn't take it anymore, and she just left. And uh, so she, she and her mother lived in a, ta in a house in town. She had two or three or so boarders. Uh, over the years. Sometimes she would have a single man who would board in, in one spare bedroom and um, then uh, she had an upstairs that she sometimes rented out to maybe a small family or something like that. But I think many women did back then. It helped make helped them make extra money and because not very many w women worked back then. Well, I had to go to school, so I just went to school, and uh, I enjoyed it as much as I could, and I took part in whatever I could. I, I lived in the country, so it wasn't as easy for me as it was some of the kids that lived in town, because I had to have a way to get back and forth, you know, to the different activities, but I was a cheerleader, and I was in different musical groups, and I wrote for the school newspaper, I always loved to sing. I loved music. I did my share of dating several different boys. I think I probably met him at the R&R &R in Clinton and probably through my girlfriend that lived next door to me. She had dated him and uh, when she was broken up with her regular boyfriend and and uh, I think she introduced him to me. If I remember right, that's how it was. And anyway, we just dated, got along well and all like that. And uh, we finally got married. We got married in my home at my mom and dad's house. 